Cynthia Tucker is the Pulitzer Prize winning columnist at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Her comments about the South, race relations, and politics often inflame her readers. We talked about how she keeps her sanity and why she's so passionate about writing. At her computer, Cynthia Tucker carefully crafts a new column for the AJC. The Pulitzer Prize winner is the first African-American woman to hold the position of editorial page editor for a major daily newspaper. Let's talk about how you decide what you're going to criticize. <laughs> well, I hope that I don't just criticize. I hope that I also salute people that I think are doing the right thing. But I think it's incumbent upon me as the editorial page editor in a city that has been politically predominantly black for a long time to especially talk about black public figures that I think are not serving the public well. Um, it is my special calling, if you will. It is easy enough for me to criticize white political leaders, public figures, especially for racism. And I certainly do that. I'm not going to let them off the hook. But I think that I have a special obligation to talk about my peers. But that also means that people in the black community say, you're a sellout. I still hear that, oddly enough. After many years in this business, I still hear that. And I guess I've gotten used to it. Um, it's an interesting thing. If you read my email, if you read the letters to the editor that I get, many white readers still believe that I'm a racist and a white hater, that I hate all white people. Uh, some of my black readers label me a sellout. Uh, and Uncle Tom and Aunt Jemima. So with criticism that uh, comes from both extremes, I figure I must be doing something right. Cynthia developed that steely self-confidence growing up amid racism and Jim Crow laws in Monroeville, Alabama. Her parents were educators. The story of your father not allowing you to buy ice cream at a place because you had to use the side window. It was like, no, we don't do that. The pride that was instilled in you. They thought that there was much that they could do to instill confidence and self-respect in us and to have us to know that we were every bit as good as white people. There was nothing inferior about us. There was nothing inferior about our behavior, about our conduct, and there was nothing inferior about our intellect. And that if we didn't have to, deal with some white business owners who are going to treat us in an inferior manner. Cynthia says the high standard her parents set for her is exactly what she expects from the leaders and politicians she writes about. Are there any topics or people who are sacred cows? I can't think of any. <laughs> um, several years ago, I began to write columns which were critical of the children of Martin Luther King. And I thought that they weren't representing his legacy very well, and I thought someone needed to say so. So I did. It was perhaps foolhardy. It was perhaps a little bit reckless. Uh, but I found that I got quiet encouragement. There were many, many people who thought the same thing. What's your Achilles heel? What, what will get you to just open the door? <laughs> What's my Achilles heel? Mm, everybody you has think, one. You think I should reveal that on TV? <laughs> <laughs> it might be hard to imagine Cynthia tight-lipped about something, but she absolutely loves working with young girls. And she has received national attention for her work with the Cool Girls Mentoring Organization. She also treasures her family and her friends. And you might be surprised to learn what she does to relax. I'm in the gym several days a week. I have spinning buddies. I have treadmill buddies, people who see me day after day, sweaty, grungy. My mascara is running. 
I'm not the diva to them. I'm, oh yeah, she's in my spinning class, I know her. It's an alternative persona and it's relaxing. Let's me be somebody else.